Hey, Soul here. And anyone else feel the hype train rising? Now with that terrible rising pun out of the way, we are looking at the 1055T for our Throwback Thursday, or I'm going to call it Furious Friday because I had my uh, editing hard drive kind of die on me yesterday, so couldn't get this video. So I've started fresh and hopefully have not screwed the whole thing up. So today we are looking at the 1055T, 6 core from AMD, which came out on April 27th, 2010. Starting price, 199 So Miss Processor's coming out around that price point. This thing was absolutely epic, and it was actually my first processor I ever bought in water-cooled. With these six cores, they ran at a base frequency at 2.8 GHz and turboed up to 3.3. Some of these were an overclocker's dreams, and others were a complete pain in the ass. The one I've got today came out of a system that had a blown power supply, and though it's completely stable on stock, it does not overclock in any way, shape, or form. Today, our testbed specs are a Gigabyte G1 Gaming. SLI Edition 970 motherboard. Love the motherboard other than the super bright red LEDs, but they look kind of cool to some people, so that's really nice uh, if you're into that. Next we have 16 gigs of AMD Entertainment RAM running at 1600 megahertz. This RAM's been solid for me for years, even though I know other people have complained about that RAM in the past. Next we got our GPU, an ASUS DirectCU 290X. This card runs like a tank and just won't die. It is extra silent and runs extra cool with those beautiful giant fans on it. Next we have a PNY 480 gig SSD. Thank you PNY for providing this for our test bench. It runs great and hasn't given me any troubles yet. We're also running Windows 10 Professional 64-bit with all updates run, as well as all the most modern drivers for today. As well as the last thing on our crazy text bench is a random cooler. Don't know what it is or where it came from, but it's held together with paper clips and it does a damn good job. Instead of wasting any more time, let's jump right into the game test. So one of my favorite games of all time, we're going to start with Fallout 4. With this processor being quite old, we wouldn't think it would do very well. But nonetheless, we set up the Ultra preset with everything maxed out, and we were pleasantly surprised. Uh, running around Diamond City, which I did for the bulk of this test, uh, we saw frame rates as low as 12, as high as 62, but with an average of about 42, which was totally playable. I found any time I left Diamond City, it sat around the 42 average and didn't have any problems from that point out. Uh, is this processor going to completely cover you for all new high-end games? Maybe not, but considering this thing came out in 2010 and if you're still running it since then, that's pretty impressive and you've definitely got that $199 worth. Next we jump into Doom, a very fast-paced FPS that is actually definitely my game of the year. I absolutely love the game, had a lot of fun playing it, even though half the time I will take a big break between it and completely forget every control, which kind of sucks. But being another Bethesda game, we saw similar frame rates as we did to Fallout 4. This is just set at very high, not at their ultra settings, but we witnessed a minimum of about 12 frames per second, an average of 48, and a maximum of 66. The entire time, I didn't notice any real stutter, except for when big things were happening all around you, but most of the time you weren't really moving at that point, so it didn't seem to impact my gameplay. As you can see here, I played terribly no matter what's going on. Uh, seeing that 48 as the average frame rate was actually quite nice. It was really smooth, and it definitely beats the console 30 FPS, and all in all, the 10... 55T is still really holding up a lot better than I was expecting for a new AAA game. Now we jump from demons coming through portals from hell on Mars all the way to a real life hell of Battlefield 1, the World War 1 replica game. It is an absolutely stunning game to play, beautiful visuals, great stories throughout, and some really really good characters. This game is optimized for AMD, and many many people have reported this. I've looked at many benchmarks talking about this and seeing how much it favors AMD over Nvidia, but with a processor like the 1055T, if you're running at stock, you're going to run into some trouble here and there. If you can overclock it at all, I have seen some amazing videos, maxed out settings, and having absolutely no troubles. But no matter what I did on this processor, it just would not accept even a 1% overclock, so at stock, we did run into some issues. We did see on the larger maps a minimum frame rate of 8, but our average was still sitting around 70, which was quite playable. This 8 is usually experienced during the startup, or after a big bombing, or things like that. Or if a train was coming by and blowing the crap out of your entire team, then the frame rates will drop there, which is kinda to be expected, I guess. 
but with a maximum frame rate of 121, which is quite impressive considering this thing is 7 years old and was only $199 at the time of release. If you're still running one, you definitely got your bang for your buck with this one. All in all, it's a decent processor for Battlefield 1. It'll get you by, except for on those large maps where you're going to see problems. But as you can see here, during loading on a map, once you're first getting in, you get that hesitation and lag. But once it gets in, things seem to run quite well. Uh, I do notice that the processor sits at 90 to 100% throughout the entire gameplay, which is the only game I tested that I noticed this with. All in all, if Battlefield 1 is the major game that you're planning on playing, uh, upgraded process is going to be the way to go, or wait till Ryzen, or go with yourself a nice cabby lake. The last game on today's testing is Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and for this game we max all the settings out, and at 1080p we would notice a minimum frames per second of 71. That's keeping us above the 60 frames per second minimum that I would actually ever call this game enjoyable at, as under 60 frames per second you can run into a lot of troubles. It averages 116, which is very nice to see, with a maximum of 267. All around, I did not have any problems with this processor in my terrible gameplay, I'm just a bad player at it. All in all, the 1055T is definitely a great game if you're looking for esports games like League of Legends, Dota, or CSGO. You're never going to run into any issues running even this older processor to this point. The 1055T powered through this, even though I didn't do so well. All in all, do I recommend the 1055T? If you can pick up one of these for next to nothing, definitely. But for the next couple days here, we're going to start focusing on a few other AMD CPUs while Ryzen's prepping to come out here next week. And we want to make sure that you know where AMD has been, and how they've been doing, and things like that. Many people like to hate on AMD as they say they haven't done a big leap in a long time, which they haven't come out with a new architecture in a long time. But can you still play pretty much every game on it? Yeah, no problem. Will the 1055T get you through your days until you can afford a new Ryzen or Cabby Lake? Most likely it will and most likely you won't really have any major complaints. Will you have to dial down some settings here and there? Probably. But all in all, this is sold at Real Hard Reviews, and I do recommend the 1055T, and thinking all the way back to April 27th, 2010, I did have a 1055T in my hand, and it was one of my favorite processors at that time. I shocked to see one come back across my bench again and really really enjoy doing this if you like this make sure to comment on this uh give me any advice you can see it's the first throwback thursday we've done yet make sure to like subscribe and comment and we will be coming back with two more processor reviews before our next big giveaway so this is souls 121 with real hard reviews you have a wonderful day bye